Alright, since I've been getting emails about it, I'll give you an update video on the belt-fed rifle that I've been designing. Um, <clears throat> but here's your action. Um, it's toggle lock action. Now, the front toggle is kind of <laughs> it's off to the side right now because I haven't I have to mill in some clearance for this spring and for the this thing here. Um, so it doesn't fit on there right now. So, but I have it off to the side so I can still run the action. Oh yeah, there we go. I took that takedown pin out uh, that holds this down, and you can see it opens up pretty much like a an AR-15, which is kind of cool. Um, it takes two hands to take the pin out, so I took it out before I started the video and then forgot. Here's your fire control group uh, right here. It's its own little module that you can kind of take out. Uh, this big hole right here is your uh, ejection port. It ejects out the bottom. Uh, as far as through here, there's kind of a whole lot of stuff going on there. So this is the bolt <coughs> in here. This is the bottom focus. Maybe. There we go. This is the bottom of the toggle. So there we go. Move there. There's this long linkage. It goes down to here, and this is where the gas piston is on the end of this rod. So the piston actually moves forward when firing to open the toggle. Put this takedown pin back in. There we go. Okay. So that pin back in, now it'll, it'll stay put. Open up. You see you have an, I have an empty case right in here. Um, a belt would feed up into here. So what I'm gonna do is try to simulate best I can how this would feed. There's a, there's a shell. Empty case here. I'm going to try to get this to cam. There we go. See it in there? Oh, there we go. Okay. So now it's locked into this spring-loaded, these two spring-loaded teeth on either side that have grabbed the rim of the case. Now, normally that would happen as this is fully in battery. Um, but that's kind of hard to do. Uh, it depends on the overall length of the cartridge to actually do that. So with an empty shell, you, you can't make it work. Um, this spring right here, as the action cycles, will push that down the kind of feed rails and also eject the previous case. So I'm going to do it slowly here. See, there's the what would have been the fire shell. This would be the new shell being pushed down this spring. And then it pushes the old case out of the way. There it goes. This new one is in position to be chambered. And it just continues to repeat. Um, that's most of the feed mechanism so far. I haven't gotten the actual kind of belt feeding mechanism, but you know, that'll kind of feed it in there. That. I have to mill more clearance on this toggle, um, gas, block, gas, but none of that's done yet. Although, if you look at that while I cycle the action, you can see it moved forward. Again, it's kind of reversed to make the bolt go back. The piston goes that way because it's on the back, bottom, other side of the toggle. That hopefully makes sense. Uh, I have to make the whole gas block and the piston assembly, and most of the feed mechanism is probably going to be actually out here. There'll be probably a pin on this rod that interacts with a cam, sort of like a conventional belt-fed gun, but normally would be kind of up here on a belt-fed to do the feeding. I'm going to actually have it up here, out, out here, and a linkage that comes over and pushes the shells in, pushes the belt in, rather. That's the plan. Um, of course, we also have an uh, air-cooled barrel, which is kind of cool there. Thinned. Uh, inside of that is a... Yugo M70 barrel that I have set up to be thread into this get block here. There we go. So it's threaded and threads into this block, which is welded into these plates. This support for the gas piston is welded. Two plates on either side, welded in the back here to reinforce wherever this joint is. And there's also a welded pin through here uh, to keep the whole thing kind of more or less stable. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of issues with warping 
with welding something like that. Um, so I've kind of been fighting warp <laughs> this whole process with the receiver, but I got it pretty good. Um, lower receiver is made from two pieces, the bottom bit and then there's a vertical bit that was welded on. That turned out to be a mistake. Uh, once I welded that, it annealed all of this aluminum in the back part, and it's it's pretty bad. Uh, the machining was terrible afterwards because it was just too soft. Um, it was just gumming up all the cutters, and it was, it was terrible. Um, I think I might try to remake the lower receiver in steel at some point. Um, it'll add a little bit of weight, but this gun shouldn't be too heavy. Um, I'm speculating probably around 11 pounds, so if I end up adding half a pound for a steel lower receiver, that's... I, I don't mind that too much. It's a belt fit rifle. I don't... that doesn't bother me. Um, so that's the current state of this rifle. Um, I have fired it into the toggle. If you take this off and the spring out, then this will fit in there. You can uh, lock it down. It gets in place. It's head spaced. Um, the head space is a little bit tight. I might back it off a few thou, but it's good enough to fire. Uh, the only issue I had was this pin back here. Um, was originally a little too soft, so I had to uh, make it. We'll make a new one out of higher alloy steel, uh, hardened and temperate, and it's doing fine now. It's rock solid now. 